We are extremely proud to have the Wild Sheep Foundation as our title sponsor. They've been with us for a long time and registration is now live for the 2025 Sheep Show, January 16th to 18th in Reno, Nevada. Register online today. Friday and Saturday night banquets will be sellouts. If you plan on attending these banquets, I strongly encourage you to register now. Go to wildsheepfoundation.org and don't forget to sign up or renew your less than one club membership. You know all about that event. You can win a once in a lifetime hunt. You can drink as much beer as you can handle and uh, you're going to have an amazing time. Again, go to wildsheepfoundation.org. I'll be sharing more details in the weeks to come. And we can't wait to return to the Wild Sheep Foundation's legendary sheep show in Reno, Nevada. This episode is also brought to you by Zolio. If you're in the market for a new satellite communicator, we highly recommend Zolio. You can get yourself one by going to zolio.com. That's Z-O-L-E-O.com. Or find a certified retailer near you. And last but not least, we're very excited to welcome back North Arm Knives. These guys have been with us for many, many years. Their knives have been with us on all of our hunts to the backcountry, on the lake, and in the kitchen. Get yourself a kick-ass blade today at northarmknives.com. Welcome to episode 166. I hope the season is treating you well so far. Mine's been interesting. Let's just put it that way. Uh, I have some more updates to give you. I'll, uh, I'll circle back on a few things at the end of this episode. Keep those hunting stories coming. Man, our uh, inbox is uh, is full of them right now. And if I haven't got back to you, don't worry, I will. I'll let you know that I received it. And I will play all of them eventually uh, on these upcoming episodes. I'm going to play a couple of them today just to try and get ahead of them. And yeah, I really appreciate you guys sending those in. If you would like to enter your story for a chance to win a blade from North Arm Knives, you can send that in to info at the rookiehunter.com. If you're not sure what I'm talking about, well, you'll find out in a minute. I'm going to play one right off the top of the episode. Uh, but please uh, don't forget to support our sponsors, North Arm Knives, obviously, the Wild Sheep Foundation, and Zolio. Let's uh, let's get into this one. Sit back, relax, crack a nice cold beer, and enjoy episode 166. Excuse the uh, potential noise in the background. They're uh, cleaning the carpets outside here. Um, anyways, I didn't really explain what this episode is. And uh, what you're eventually going to hear is uh, a recap of our hunt at the end of it. And I was by myself at the campfire, which was unexpected. But anyways, we'll get there. I want to kick things off here with a North Arm Knives uh, contest submission hunting story. Uh, this one is a shorter one. I'm going to play another one at the end of the episode too. This one came from Joel. So enjoy. This story happened when I was still a rookie hunter myself. A group of us got drawn for LEH moose. We were allowed to shoot two bulls. Two of the guys in our group bailed on the hunt, so it was just my buddy and I. We had both just started hunting two years prior and were self-taught hunters, as neither of us had family or close friends that hunted. On our first morning of the hunt, we parked the truck at the top of a mountain and got out to get ready to hike, when I looked across a small valley and saw a bull about 600 yards away. I had watched a YouTube video about cow calling a few days before the hunt, 
So I gave my best, worst-sounding call, and to my shock, the bull instantly headed straight towards us, followed by a second bull. We hunkered down behind some windfall and waited. Five minutes later, the first bull burst out of a stand of pines not ten yards away, and I let him have it. Bang. Flop. Meanwhile, my buddy tracked down the second bull, 100 yards down the road, and within 15 minutes of the start of our first ever moose hunt, we had two bulls down. We quickly learned how much work it is to gut and quarter a moose. Nice one, Joel. Thanks for sending that in. Uh, yeah, that's a great way to learn. <laughs> uh, just do it. Um, I mean, do it with uh, some preparation, some planning, but uh, I'm sure you learned a lot from that one. Um, any length of story is fine for these submissions, so and they don't have to be long. Um, they can be shorter too. So uh, yeah, awesome. Yeah, keep sending them in, guys. Info at the rookiehunter.com. And uh, I'm going to play one more at the end of the episode. But uh, now I'm going to transport you to my campfire uh, on our hunt, which um, we will we will do another episode on this one with with everybody. This just didn't go as we had planned. There is something kind of fun in here, a little Easter egg. There's um, a point, I think I started talking about weather. And if you listen carefully, you can hear some cracking in the background. And at the time when I recorded this, I thought I was just losing my mind and, and hearing shit. But when I listened back to the recording, <laughs> there was something crashing around in the bush behind me. I wasn't just tripping out. So with that, let's jump right into it. All right. I promised you guys a podcast from the backcountry. Not exactly the way I pictured it, <laughs> and I'll, uh, I'll get to why. But I'm out here solo at the moment. And um, there's a lot uh, that, that I wanted the guys to explain and chime in on. So we're going to have to obviously do another podcast at some point. But um, anyway, I really wanted to record some stuff out here and uh, fill you guys in on what we've been up to. It's been a great trip. We got in here on Monday and it's now Sunday and uh, I'll be heading out tomorrow if all goes to plan. So to uh, recap, um, I did some scouting um, in an area and uh, decided that it wasn't the best place to go for a number of reasons, mainly with the surprise access and ATV trails that we had no idea were there. Um, so Garrett went and scouted our Plan B area, and to our surprise, he got an elk, uh, which we were sort of bearing the lead on because uh, we wanted him to tell the story. I actually still don't know the full story. Um, because I want to hear it for the first time uh, as he tells it to us on the podcast. So we're all going to get together at some point. He's going to tell that story. So we figured this was a, a good place to come. There's lots of animals around. So that's what we did. And to get where I'm sitting right now, it's a little bit of an ordeal. So we had to get the trucks. We had to park them down below. And then the only way to get to this particular trailhead was to use an ATV. Originally we were going to use two. Um, we decided to just go with one and then just make a couple trips back and forth because Garrett actually arrived a day later. So anyways, it made sense. It wasn't a big deal to to make the trip back. Just some extra hiking and, and uh, an extra trip back on the ATV. So not a big deal. So anyways, Kelly and I got in on Monday. We set up camp got everything ready got all the firewood built a fire pit um yeah everything kind of went off without a hitch no problem and then uh later that day we went out and scouted some areas that um garrett had sort of told us about and stuff that we looked at on google earth and uh it looked pretty promising i'm trying to remember i think on that first night we saw one black bear and that was it so the following day, we got up and we hunted the morning. And I don't believe 
we saw anything. It's it's funny how the days start to to blur into one another. But uh, Garrett arrived that afternoon, so Kelly, uh, well, we both hiked out to the uh, to the ATV. Uh, I hung out there. He went back and got Garrett, and uh, Garrett actually brought the the TP, and I have the Hilleberg, so I have to come down and 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 pack that up, which wasn't a big deal. And the the reason why is because we, we actually only had to hike a couple of kilometers to our base camp. We've got a pretty sweet spot, it's close to water. Uh, water's only like a yeah, five minute walk from here. And then we figured the teepee would be kind of cool as a place to hang out and to put on our gear and a spot to get ready in the morning, just nice when you can stand up and something. And we knew there was some bad weather rolling in, so I thought, yeah, might as well bring it. So anyways, um, Kelly went and got him, picked him up on the ATV, brought him up. We uh, hiked everything in and uh, got Garrett settled, got the teepee set up, and then we went out and hunted that evening. Um, again, trying to remember if we saw anything. I think we might have seen a doe that night. And then the following day, I went up to the same spot with the two of them. I decided to go do some exploring and um, saw a massive bear. It was about six kilometers from camp or so. And uh, you guys probably know I've been on the fence about a bear. And I've been waiting for, like, the bear. And, you know, it's like I've seen lots and it's always like, oh, I don't know, man. That's just not might not be the one and finally this bear was was big he was probably pretty old and uh super cool looking and i was like yeah this is this is the bear so he he started coming down it's kind of like benches of of rock faces and he's like crawling down him and getting his way closer and closer to me and if he had made it to sort of like the next bench, it would have been like a perfect 200 yard shot. So I got myself set up as you, cause he, he was disappearing behind these, these little benches. So I had time to, to get my pack on a stump. I moved to rock and stuff out of the way. I had my rifle ready to go, but he ended up circling back and then heading the same way that he came more or less. And by the time he popped up again, he was probably like 450 yards away, which, um, isn't a, a shot I want to take, so he disappeared. And then uh, I uh, tried to find him. I, I found another way up to go up this ridge uh, where I saw him. It was actually this really cool bull, and uh, looked around up there. And no go. Those guys are quick, man. It's pretty amazing, but incredible bear. It's probably one of the biggest bears I've ever seen. It's definitely up there, and. Uh, what a mature bear like that man it's just the way they move is so different than than a younger bear uh, i mean i've bumped a few here throughout this trip and they're a little more cautious and looking around and uh, a big bear like that man it just seems like he just doesn't give a shit he's just doing his thing he's moving with purpose and uh, a lot of speed so really cool just to see that um headed back and then the guys uh they actually found this might have been the next day so excuse me if i'm blurring days here but um hold on let me think let me think they saw some does and a few black bears and then that was it so we all met back at camp later that evening next day pretty much the same uh same drill they went up to the same spot they'd been going to I decided to go back and see if I could find that bear again. And uh, there's lots of mule deer sign, hoping to find elk, because uh, where I had gone is kind of where where Garrett had um, seen an elk herd. He got it closer to where we were camped, um, but uh, knew that there was elk in that area, but there was, yeah, not much sign of anything, um, just older stuff. So anyways, I scattered that out, never did find that that bear again but um managed to find another black bear on the way back turns out it was a uh 
sow and a cub, so they were fun to watch for a while. Garrett and Kelly saw a four point that day, and uh, they went on a big chase and tried to find that with no luck. Um, the area that they were in, the, the vantage point they have, uh, you can see a ton of country, it's beautiful. And um, they saw this, this four point, but to get to it, had to go through some pretty thick shit. And by the time they got up the other side, the deer was gone or, you know, slipped into the, into the brush somewhere and, and uh, never to be seen again. And then the following day, which was yesterday, Garrett uh, managed to get a black bear, a nice sized bear. And uh, so I was a ways away when that happened. Um, Kelly was close, but uh, not close enough. So uh, Garrett took care of it on his own, which was cool, and uh, packed all the meat out. We got it here, uh, hung it up, and um, yeah, it was a good day. And then today, the plan was to um, take the meat out because the temps have been a little bit warmer uh, than we expected. It's cool enough overnight, um, but still getting higher temps during the the day and it's you know above 10 degrees so that's uh getting into some sketchy territory there so they decided to um take the meat out together i was going to hunt on my own uh and they're going to get it down to the trucks where we had the the coolers chained up and stuff and um put it in there because they're full of ice and uh, just make sure the meat was good so i went out and um found myself a four-point mule deer. Oh, sorry, the night before, Kelly and I went out after Garrett got his bear. I'm really blending these days, but we saw uh, a two-point, a three-point, and a four-point. Couldn't make anything happen on those ones, uh, which is why I went back to this particular spot this morning, and I found another four-point. I made a wicked stock on them. It was like textbook everything went the way you want it to go i got um within i, I got the uh, ranger on it it was like 63 yards so i laid down i put my crosshairs on him um after i counted tines over and over again because there's actually four on one side and, and three on the other and it's four point only at this point and so he was legal um put my crosshairs on him, pulled the trigger, and click. It was a misfire. It was a shitty cartridge, I think, or I need to get my my rifle checked out. But he uh, heard the click, and off he went, and never saw him again. So pretty disappointing. That was kind of my last chance to make something happen for myself, and uh, it didn't quite work out. Meanwhile... Um, could have been a blessing in disguise because um, I got a call from Garrett and Kelly not long after and uh, they had some issues with the, with the ATV and um, they couldn't get back. They got to go into the nearest town here and uh, get a part. It sounds like they were able to find someone that can give them what they need. I'm actually not 100% sure what happened. So... Um, by the time they got that all figured out, um, they couldn't get it. They have to get it tomorrow and, uh, they weren't going to be able to make it back up here. So, and that's why I'm up here on my own, which, um, is fine. Not ideal. We was looking forward to, um, having a fun last night with these guys and smoking some cigars and we had some fireball in here and all that kind of stuff. So it's a little bit, um, disappointing obviously, but Sometimes these things are out of your control and um, it is what it is. So, keeping a nice fire going for myself here and um, keeping myself entertained. I got some tunes that I've been playing while, uh, while I haven't been recording. And uh, camp is pretty awesome. Lots of firewood. Got pretty much everything I need. So, um, anyway, that's kind of the overview. I, I'm pretty sure I botched a lot of that. I'm sure all of you can relate when you've been somewhere for uh, 
six days, it's like, what, what did we do? What was day one? What was day two? <laughs> it gets a little, gets a little blurry for sure, but, um, it's been awesome, man. And I think we've seen like seven bears, um, out here, maybe more, maybe eight or nine between the three of us. And, um, obviously Garrett took one out of here, which is cool. That was his first bear. We'll get him to talk about that too. And, uh, had some close calls. Kelly had a close call with a four point. That would have been his first one. So the, um, the important thing is that we've seen lots of animals. We didn't find any elk. They've moved out of the area that, um, that Garrett got his in. So it's, um, it's always interesting to kind of try and figure out where does a herd of elk go? I mean, we can see a lot of the country here, but they've obviously moved up higher and, and further than we can get to. So, um, we know they're here. We just don't know where they ended up. So the weather's been pretty interesting. We had some warmer temps. I'm sure anybody in BC has experienced that. And then we had this cold front roll in that actually brought a pretty big storm. Hey, go on. Here and shit. Uh, so we had lightning and all kinds of shit. Uh, it was pretty wild. Super high winds actually blew down the TP while we were gone. And uh, yeah, didn't really let go for, for two days. It ended up being nicer the following day. We had some sun and stuff, but the wind was just ripping. One sec. And, uh, so the, the day of the storm, I mean, it wasn't too bad. We ended up sleeping pretty good that night, but the, the next night it was relentless. The, the tent was just shaking like crazy, flapping in the wind. We've got the Hilleberg. I mean, it's built for it, but it's still noisy. And the trees were just whistling in the wind. There's some that are close to us. I mean, try and set up the tent in a spot where you don't have to worry about it, but still it was, uh, pretty wild. So none of us slept that night at all <laughs> uh, part of the fun of being out here but um it's definitely cooled off since that that storm and uh we were seeing more and more animals after that took place so i think when we first got in here that's part of why we weren't seeing any elk or any deer or, or much of anything everything i think was just bedded down uh, because it was heat and uh, the moon was actually pretty bright leading up to that. We had the big full moon. So I think uh, everything was probably more or less nocturnal uh, at that point. But um, these cool temperatures really brought out all the critters. So it's really cool to kind of just see how that affects everything. And that kind of helps you, man, think about your strategy for, for hunting. And this this trip, like any just learned so much from it um you kind of learn all the different travel routes for animals the more you get in there and get off the trail and and see where they're hanging out and then you find water sources and and uh, all this you know ground cover that they're traveling through it's super interesting man so lots of uh really good takeaways i'm really disappointed that i wasn't able to uh pull the trigger on that well I did pull the trigger but um I had a misfire on that really nice buck this morning it's gonna haunt me for a while but I think it's the ammo which um I'll have to circle back on that whole topic too we'll do that with Kelly but yeah anyways that's the uh more or less update we'll do another recap with all of us I think it'll be easier to piece together <laughs> what each day looked like and what everybody learned from this trip but uh all in all it's been really good uh, all of our gear has been great the zolios have been working um flawlessly between the three of us that's our sat communicator uh, we all have them now and uh, we've been able to send our locations and, and keep in touch whenever we split up uh, so that's been a huge huge help just to know where everybody's at and uh how they're doing bats flying around um i want to give a shout out to peak refuel i don't know if you guys have tried those um freeze-dried meals but they're actually really good and um 
if you know me, you know that I've, I've always been on the fence about a lot of these ones, you know, the mountain houses and stuff that you kind of just have to choke down because they taste like shit, but they're calories. Um, these ones were really good, actually, so I would recommend trying some of those out. My, my faves were the uh, chicken Alfredo and the um, chicken coconut curry. Uh, Garrett had a couple of them too, and he really liked them, so you can give his recommendations, but uh, definitely check those out uh, if you haven't already. There's a lot more options these days, which is cool, and a good meal at the end of the day is pretty awesome. So anyway, I'm going to leave it at that, and um, we will check in with you guys uh, as a trio at some point here. Everybody's back to work here uh, on Tuesday, so... A little bit of uh, getting back in the groove of things, but um, wanted to let you guys know what we've been up to, and I promised you one by the fire, so there you go. Um, thanks, guys. We'll, uh, we'll talk to you soon. Cheers. When I listened back to this, I realized that my dates and order of events were so fucking out there that uh, I couldn't believe it. <laughs> We'll, uh, we'll patch this up. I mean, all the details are there. They're just on the wrong days and, and kind of scattered all over the place. But um, kind of funny to listen back and uh, put myself uh, next to that campfire again and, and just think about how tired I was and how much hiking I had done and uh, how many things had happened and uh, all the kilometers and, and so on and so forth. And so, yeah, it's not a surprise that... Uh, I was all over the map, but uh, like I said, all the details of, of what happened are, are more or less there, and the three of us will get together at some point to to um, to put this hunt together properly and, and get everybody's perspective on it. So since we've gotten back from this hunt, um, some things have, have happened, and so I went out, um, geez, it was probably two days, you know, I... I Got home, had a day of rest, and I was missing the backcountry so much that uh, the following day after that, I was right back out there looking for deer again. I just, uh, I'm completely obsessed at this point. So I got out uh, with my dog. This is the first hunt him and I have done together this year. And I've talked about this a lot. I used to take my dog, Oscar, uh, deer hunting with me, um, same breed of dog. And it, uh, it adds a lot of extra challenges, but the way I look at it is like, I mean, I love my dog. I want, I wanted to have a dog so that he can enjoy all the things that I enjoy, even if, um, it makes it more challenging sometimes. And, uh, I mean, it just gives the animals a better chance. So I'm putting the ball in their court, uh, by having a good time bringing my dog. So we got on the trail, um, it was later. I don't think I left my place until, oh man, sometime after 3.30 maybe. Um, probably didn't get to the trail till after 4. And we've only got, uh, like at that time, sunset would have been around 6.30, maybe a little a little bit later than 6.30, but somewhere in that, in that neighborhood. So not a lot of time. But like I said, completely obsessed. That buck that I missed out on because of uh, what I thought was faulty ammo was was haunting me and I just really wanted to to pull this thing together man and and um missing an opportunity like that based on nothing you did wrong just your equipment um is a hard pill to swallow there's all that um mental energy that goes into pulling the trigger on an animal and and the uh the stress of making sure it's legal. That was that was at a four point only um, part of the season. So a lot of um, a lot of mental and physical energy went into that. And I wanted to redeem myself. I wanted to find another opportunity. So like I said, we got to the trail sometime after four o'clock. We started hiking, and it was an overcast day. So that even shortened the day quite a bit. And, uh, I decided to sort of check out some new areas. I, I got off the trail a little bit and, uh, I knew I wasn't going to be able to make it too far. I had a, a spot in mind that I wanted to, to get to, and then that's where I was going to turn around, which would, um, give me enough light to 
hunt my way out to a certain degree. And, and by the time I got to the last, let's say kilometer of the trail, it would have been dark and that's more or less what happened. But, uh, anyway, so I get to the, the spot that I want to turn around. It's the spot that I, I figured I had good chances of, of holding deer because I've seen them there before. So I got to that point, glassed around a little bit and started making my way back. And maybe a quarter of a kilometer back in the direction that I had just came from, I noticed a deer on the left side of the trail, just kind of hanging out in the trees. And at first I thought, oh shit, it's just a doe. Uh, it was a ways away. So I put my binos on it and I saw some antlers and now it's uh, any buck. So I am honestly a little bit picky now, even though it's any buck, I'm, uh, my personal preference is to still try and get something that's, that's more mature. So I think, all right, I'm going to, I'm going to stalk in there as best I can with the dog, have a good look at this buck and, and see what I think. So I, I got in to reasonable distance, um, because I have my dog and he has to be on leash while, uh, hunting deer. What I thought I would do, and this is, a, this is all a first for, for me and him, uh, was that I would drop my pack, tie him to it, make sure he was relaxed. He has his, uh, his remote collar on so I can vibrate him if he's, if he's crying or, or anything like that. So I tied him to it. He was actually really good. I crawled up over this little ridge and uh, put glass on this buck, and uh, he was a three-point. And not, not a cranker, nothing huge, but, uh, he was a, a nice size deer. So I thought, well, how many opportunities am I going to get? So the deer kind of continued walking, um, wasn't, uh, if it was aware of my presence, he wasn't concerned with me. Uh, and he was just sort of feeding and, and making his way along. So I let him get behind the next ridge and then, uh, I put my pack back on put my dog back on the leash uh, hooked to me. It's one of those, like, um, I like the, the leashes that you can clip around your waist. So you're kind of hands-free uh, anyway. So clipped him back onto my waist, made my way to the next Ridge. And then I clipped him to a tree, dropped my pack again, found the buck, uh, sat down, put my sights on him, pulled the trigger, click. It happened again. Another fucking misfire. So I thought, man, if this is a bad box of ammo, that's two in a row. And, and I should go back further. I, I had gone to the range a couple of weeks prior uh, to this, uh, maybe a week and a half prior, and uh, things seemed to be working fine. I had one misfire while I was there, but that was from a bunch of, you know, a whole bunch of shots. So now I'm starting to wonder, okay, it's probably not the ammo, but if it is, let's try another shot. Click. Another shot, click, and uh, I was a little upset. So obviously the rifle was the culprit, not the ammo. And all I had to do was just sit there and, and watch this buck graze. And uh, he didn't even move, actually. He kind of just hung out uh, like he was taunting me, kind of giving you a, giving me a big middle finger. Um, it's like they know sometimes. <laughs> so. I licked my wounds, I uh, packed up my shit, and I walked out of there uh, in the dark. Um, and uh, the first thing I did the following day was uh, call the gunsmith and uh, was able to drop off my rifle that day. And it turns out that, um, I don't know, I don't know shit about rifles, to be completely honest with you. But he said the oil inside of the bolt uh, because it was older, had sort of thickened to a point where he says like varnish. Uh, maybe somebody can explain this better to me. Uh, but he said sometimes that can, that can happen when your rifle is out in hotter temperatures. And I mean, um, we do a lot of backpacking trips. I mean, it's not an insanely hot temperatures. And if it's uh, not out hunting, it's in my place here. I'm locked up and temperature controlled. So I think it was probably more a case of it that it just needed to be clean because it hadn't been done. Uh, I mean, it certainly hadn't been done since I've had it and I've had it for, for geez, uh, 11 years now. Um, it's been 11 years since my old man passed and uh, I'm not sure when he did it before that. So 
Anyways, there was just too much shit built up on the inside and the firing pin wasn't hitting hard enough. Um, even though it was leaving like a, you could see where the pin had hit uh, the uh, the bullet, it just wasn't enough. So anyways, they they test fired it in the shop. They, they used some type of blank to, to do that. He's assured me that everything's working fine. Uh, you got it all cleaned up and and uh, should be ready to go. So I've been out a couple times uh, since I got it back the last two evenings here. And guess what? I'm not seeing jack shit out there, which uh, no surprise. That's hunting for you. <laughs> and uh, man, it's it's so rare that you get one good opportunity on something like a nice four point. Never mind a second opportunity on a nice three point. And uh, now I'm just, I'm over overly obsessed i'm gonna get out right after i record this and keep trying until i can make something happen so there's my update um is what it is um i'm just gonna keep trying and as you heard uh garrett got an elk got a beautiful elk and he also got a black bear so he needs to come on this podcast sooner than later because these stories start to fade and uh and give you guys and us, because well, I mean, we know the the black bear story more or less, uh, but we haven't asked him any questions about the elk because we want to hear it for the first time on the podcast. So expect that soon. We'll also do a uh, a hunt, a backpack hunt recap with all three of us at some point, hopefully sooner than later, and uh, we can share with you some of our takeaways as far as. Uh, gear and what we learned and food and and all that kind of stuff so you can look forward to that but before we go we're going to do one more hunting story and this one comes from chris as a group of seven colleagues we always put in for moose leh in two groups luckily this year both groups drew in our chosen area we left early morning and set up camp in time for a quick evening hunt A couple whitetails spotted that night were nice to see. First morning, my friend and I quadded up one side of the valley and hiked into a couple swamps. Not much for moose sign, only grizzly sign. Late morning, we decided to go to the other side of the valley to check out another swamp we had e-scouted. On the way over, we bumped into two people from our group who had found something wild in the swamp in which we were heading. They had found a still-alive calf moose stuck in a mud pit. The pit was approximately 20 feet by 20 feet, and the moose was up to its shoulders in sloppy mud. The moose was exhausted, cold, shivering, and actively trying to get out. With just the two of them, they tried to help it but were limited in what they could do. No cow moose was around. Once they told us the situation, we obviously wanted to go try and get it out with four of us. We drove back and parked the machines. The swamp was a short hike through an old cut, and opened into a long, wide, mostly dry swamp area. The mud pit was about a ten-minute walk down the swamp. As we just began to walk, I spotted a stump that looked an awful lot like a moose on the other side of the swamp. I glassed it and still wasn't sure. Another person in the group thought it was a stump, so we continued to walk. About ten seconds later, as I was keeping an eye on the stump, it began to run across the swamp. Moose! A bull! One person cow called and stopped it, as another member shot. It was a good hit. The moose ran about 25 yards, stopped, and took a follow-up shot. He toppled. First full day, on our way to rescue a stuck moose, and we dropped a younger, beautiful bull. It was just before 2 p.m. Priorities changed. Luckily, with four of us and a short pack out, we were back to camp by dark. This is the second bull my north arm lynx has taken apart, And after seeing how well it does, two people in my group have bought one. I always try to promote North Arm, and specifically the Lynx, when I get the chance. We still had work to do, hoping the calf survived overnight. The next morning, we met back at the swamp for 10 a.m., knowing there was a gut pile between us and the mud pit, and were confident a grizzly would have moved in overnight. We were very cautious. We stopped on the edge of the swamp and let out a cow call in case another bull was hanging around. One minute or so after we called, we saw movement in the bush about forty yards away. They were short and running through the patchy willows. Wolves? Nope. 
two grizzly cubs staring at us forty yards away. I started scanning the bush as we heard a bit of noise, and I saw a big brown head staring right at me. At this point we started making some good noise, and luckily after a few seconds they took off in the opposite direction. I guess my cow call was convincing. That was the first grizzly I've seen in the wild, and the whole situation really got the heart pounding. We gave it a few minutes and walked down to the mud pit, on high alert. Arriving at the mud pit, the calf was still alive. However, he was even more exhausted than the day before. Our plan was to get a strap of webbing around his neck and try to help guide him to the edge of the pit several tries, and he was just too weak to do much of an attempt to climb out. We decided we were just going to have to muscle him out. We tried four times but couldn't get him up over the edge. His legs were digging in. Finally, we got him alongside the bank and were able to flop him on his side and without his legs digging in, slowly slide him up. It took everything we had pulling and one guy lifting at the pit edge to get him out. Success. We were able to get him laid down so I could cut the webbing off. He was wobbly and cold, but alive. He immediately began staggering around and eating willows, staying fairly close by. I have no idea if he would survive the next 24 hours or the next week, but we gave him a chance. This experience was just as wild and surreal as getting the moose the day before. What a wild first 36 hours of our trip. That was the last moose I saw on that hunt, and I was happy to watch him walk away. That uh, was a killer story, Chris. Uh, pretty cool, man. Uh, so many things happening in, in one trip. And um, I think it kind of highlights the fact that sometimes nothing happens. And then sometimes everything happens. It doesn't seem like there's anything in between, which is um, kind of what I'm experiencing right now. Keep these coming. We will uh, keep forward them over to North Arm Knives and they will choose a winner. Uh, at the end of, um, geez, I'll have to look at, at the, uh, the calendar here. Um, but, uh, I would say probably at the end of November, sometime in there, we'll, uh, we'll be choosing our first, uh, first winner and, uh, we'll keep doing this, uh, every couple months. So keep them coming. Don't stop. Um, uh, we'll, we'll continue this, uh, for as long as you guys keep sending them. And as long as, uh, North Arm Knives is willing to, uh, keep making some blades. So we will, uh, leave with that. And hopefully check in with you guys sometime soon here with the rest of the guys. It's kind of hard to uh, to uh, line up everyone's schedules. You guys know how it is. So thank you for listening, and I hope you guys are having an awesome time. There you go. Episode 166. That was a fun one. I hope you enjoyed it. I am going to put my boots on and I'm going to get the hell out of here. I'm going to try and make this buck happen. And uh, hopefully I'll come back with some good news. Uh, nonetheless, I'm going to have some fun out there. And, uh, you know, l last night I was out and I walked out to the Northern Lights. It was spectacular, unexpected. And uh, that's the kind of shit you miss when you're sitting on your ass watching TV instead of out there chasing animals in the bush. So please support our sponsors, the Wild Sheep Foundation. Sheep Show's coming up. I hope you guys are going to be there. Zolio, that's Z-O-L-E-O. -E Check them out if you need a SAC communicator. And of course, big thanks to North Arm Knives for sponsoring this hunting story um, thing we got going on here. Send yours to info at the rookiehunter.com. We'll talk to you guys soon. Cheers. Cheers.